run. Yeah, so I have to mention uh, I'm a senior software engineer in uh, SoftSurf and I'm working for a uh, for Magic Leap project. Uh, and today I would like to talk a bit about the secure connection and go. Security is uh, kind of my idea fix. Uh, so I'm very curious always uh, about new technicalities, etc., related to this topic. Uh, that's why I am trying to share with you some details today. And uh, padlock, green padlock. Blue, blue, red padlock. It's come unvisible uh, for us and known for us because of the view taken from the browser. When we visit a web page, we can trust by looking at the padlock, we can trust that we are secure. But what this really means, which accomplishments are taken from the so called security being hidden. Uh, behind the padlocks. I can enumerate at least three at this moment. So uh, the accomplishments are encoding, authentication and integrity. Encoding means that the data sent between uh, the browser means the client and the server are hidden during the transport. Authentication means that, that the parties exchanging the information uh, might be verified and we can ensure that the parties are really who claims to be. And integrity uh, means that the data are protected pro from being forged or tampered with. And today's talk is about uh, security itself. So it's security in Go, but it touches the common aspect of security, the common aspect of HTTPS and TLS. We will dip a bit into the theoretical introduction regarding uh, key certification encryption. We'll try to generate our own certificate and put combine all these artifacts together to implement a simple client server setup uh, in Go. Let's start one more time from the example with Padlock. Let's imagine that we're trying to connect to the bank account. So I am the one side asking the bank's website uh, to log in. So I am introducing myself, the bank is saying that, hello from its site. And I have an extra $1,000. So I would like to share my money and to transfer the money to the bank account. But how do I really know that the bank is really it claims to be. Let's go back and let's one more time uh, highlight the padlock and staying behind HTTPS protocol, which is uh, like an implementation of HTTP connected with TLS protocol. So in the other words, HTTPS means it's an HTTP over TLS. But returning back to HTTP, uh, we are using TCP protocol under the hood. And in this case, we have a TCP three-way handshake when, where the client firstly send synchronize message to the server acknowledge and send it down, synchronize message and the client acknowledge that message again. And let's try and start from very simple setup where we have a client on the left and the server on the right. And we will try to 
to run very simple request to send very simple request from the server, from the client to the server using HTTP request and TCP protocol under the hood. So yeah, I have client, I have the server. So first I am running the server and I am running the client. Okay, everything is okay. Wow, I have a established connection between the client and the server. So maybe let's try something more difficult. Let's firstly take a deeper look into Mutual TLS theory. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a TCP handshake and then we are going to the TLS handshake consisting of firstly, hello, message sent from the client, which contains uh, not only hello <laughs> message, but, but also a uh, supported TLS version, supported Cypher Suites versions uh, and so-called client random, random bytes generated by the client. In the reply, the server is sending its certificate and also server random data and a chosen version of TLS Cypher Suites. After the client verification of the server certificate, the client presents uh, its own certificate. And then this certificate is being verified, is verified by the server. Then after successful uh, completion of the verification stride, we can generate on the client side the pre-master code, pre-master secret. It is encoded by server public key taken from server certificate and all those data pre-master secret, client random, server random are combined together to generate the session key. And this key is used to encode the whole further communication. So let's try to establish, uh, firstly, maybe not mutual, not mutual collection, but HTTP uh, connection between our client and the server. So first we will try to provide the certificate uh, to our server. So yeah, on the client side, we, will, we are requesting for HTTPS and uh, we will turn on certificate verification on the client side. Uh, and on the server side, we will turn on TLS server. And let's check what, uh, what, it, what will happen here. Yeah, let's turn on. Okay, one more time. So I am restarting my server. I'm running the client and I got it. I got the request from the client, which is seeking for and is expecting the certificate from me, but the server does not have a certificate. So the TLS handshake failed because of the missing TLS certificate. So let's go back to the point where we would talk a bit about key certificates and encryption. I mentioned before that the pre-master secret is generated using public key and those pre-master can be 
unscrambled using private servers key. And that is a very good example of asymmetric encryption when we have two keys, public freely distributed and private nouns only for the owner. As I mentioned, in this case, in the asymmetric encryption, when message is scrambled using public key, then it might be unscrambled, might be decrypted using private key. And of course, a reverse operation, private key using to encrypt the data. This operation might be reversed using public key. It stands in opposite to symmetric encryption a bit because it's symmetric encryption. We have one key used uh, to both encryption and decryption operation. I mentioned that the server is the owner of the certificate, but what does it really mean? Uh, and how and why should I believe the server's owner, the, the, the other party uh, taking part in the communication? Why I, should I believe that it is really it, who it claims to be? We have a commonly known standard X.509, which contains very informative, uh, very uh, useful information for us, which oh, is good. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, can you? Sorry, because I heard some noise. Okay. So let's continuing. Uh, as I mentioned, we have well-known X.509 standard, and this standard passes some useful information to the uh, party exchanging the information. It contains a subject, the owner name, contains public key shared freely among uh, different users, issuer name. In the other was a certificate authority issued this, the, the, the certificate and some validity information like expired at, valid from, etc. So we talk a bit about uh, some theory and let's go to the first uh, operation of creating keys and certificates. But before we do this, let me sum up some details. The browser of the websites we are visiting using the browsers are commonly used a certificate generated by the institutions which are well known for the browsers. In the other words, uh, the websites use a certificate signed by certificate authorities the browsers trust. You can check, for example, in your settings of your browsers, who the browser trusts. Uh, I got here a small example of the list, certificate organization list institutions, which my browsers trusts. But for the needs of internal distributed system, when we have a device, we have a server, uh, and we would like to implement mutual TLS, we mainly use internal development tools like OpenSSL when, and then we, for example, might stay a certificate authority. Of course, we can use other tools like mm, generated or uh, provided by clouds like GCP, CAS, or AWS and the other cloud providers, but it's commonly met the situation 
when uh, we, we uh, stay certificate authority as well. As I mentioned, commonly known is open SSL tool, but for the needs of today's presentation, I will use mini CA, which generated in Go, which is built and implemented in Go, and we'll try to generate our own certificate. I've let me remind the last error from from our example in the application, we got the information that the server is not aware of its certificate. So let's try to fix this problem and to generate the certificate uh, for the for the uh, sorry for the. Uh, for the server and the client. But firstly, I have to, to make some cleanup in this folder. Yeah, so I am generating a certificate from the local host. And now I can copy the certificate and the private key generated by my certificate authority. I mean, mini CA in this case from localhost directory created just before to the, one moment please, to the server. Let me check. One moment. Let me check. We have, okay, we have a certain key. So we have a certificate and we have a private key available for our server. So let's make the server aware of the client, of the certificate, and of the key one more time. And let's restart the server. And let's repeat the request from the client. Okay, now you can see that the server is aware of its certificate. The certificate is generated for local host as we could see before. And it was issued by mini CA certificate authority, but oops, here again, the client doesn't know the certificate authority. So it does not trust the certificate and the server. So what we should do here is to make the client aware of the certificate authority. So we are extending or we are setting root certificate authority configuration of our TLS to uh, add certificate pool list. And in this case, we are just putting mini CA. What we can do, let's restart one more time the server start client. Okay, I got the request from the client. The client now is verifying the certificate. And here we can see that the chain of certificate starts from the server and finishes at mini CA. So at the root certificate authority. And yeah, we got the same as helping us result. So we went through this two operation, but 
what if we would like to implement a few full mutual TLS? Uh, in this case, I mean that not only the server is presenting its own certificate, but also the client is able to send in reply a certificate. And in this case, what I can do is turn on on the server side verification of client certificate and let's try one more time what we will see so i am restarting the server I am running the client. The client is asking this, the server for the certificate. The certificate is then very, is verified, is being verified by the client. And the client is being requested for the certificate, but it is not aware of it. So the connection communication fails because of the missing server what we should do here of course we should go to mini ca and to generate certificate for the server we can for the client we can call this client for example soft surf and i am copying this data into the client Okay, got it. So let's make the client aware of this data one more time. Sorry. Uh, yeah. One more time. Let's restart the server. Send. Uh, sorry. Some uh, request from the client to client. It's verifying the, the server is asking for the certificate and the client is out now on the certificate. So you can see that the subject is soft server and it is issued by a mini CA. And oops, still this wave seen this error a few minutes before it's a similar situation as was for the client so the server does not trust the certificate provided by the client because it's a bizarre situation because it is the server is not able to verify the certificate with any certificate authority currently available for the server so what we should do now is to make the server aware of certificate authority so make it aware of cert of mini ca certificate authority let's try this one more time so let's restart the server let's repeat the operation you're asking the server the server is responding server is then asking for the certificate the certificate is sending to the client and yeah we've set up full mutual tls connection with verification on the both sides on the client side and on the server side. Small takeaways from my side at the end of this talk that uh, three types of commonly met error messages, connection refuse mainly, mainly are referring to the port being bound, for example, uh, Remote error, always check 
the other end that is complaining now. So if the server is complaining, check the client. And of course, if the client is complaining, check the server. And if there is a message about certificate site, but unknown authority, it means that the certificate is not trusted. For example, mainly that the certificate authority is unknown for the verificator. Uh, small references, maybe in this step, you have any question to me, because that's the end of this talk today. No questions. Okay, thank you very much. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for being here. I believe our audience is need some time to generate the questions. <laughs> okay, I am open to here now and after the presentation. It's not the problem. Yeah, guys, yeah, it's nine seconds. From, my, uh, from my side, maybe uh, do you have some experience of using like custom case in your project or have some issue with HTTPS connection? Uh, I, uh, can you repeat the, the first part? It, it, it's question to the audience, yeah, in general, because uh -huh. uh, in my experience, in most cases, uh, our project was like shielded by some external system and mm -hmm. internal communication was done by pure HTTP and pure TLS connection, for example. And we yes. tried to avoid uh -huh. uh, all uh, work with certificates, because it's like add additional latency, additional uh -huh. load to the server, etc. So my yeah, question uh -huh. was more okay, about so maybe... use cases. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can ask <laughs> as the first. I can ask as the first person. So I'm working because I I worked, been working uh, in the setup when where we have uh, devices and the server and the devices uh, were forged to present uh, or to authenticate using just a TLS certificate. So it was just like in this example, a few mutual TLS uh, setup because it's like internet of things or, or, or something similar. There, are, there were a setup where devices were outside the internal network and that's why HTTP connection was impossible. So we were are forged to implement uh, mutual TLS, but I am curious about uh, any other experience as well. Robert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is one question in our chat from Igor. Uh, what version TLS does your project support? Very good question. <laughs> I have to check, but I will do. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, HTTP version three uh, supports or implements under the hood quick protocol, not uh, uh, TLS, uh, not um, TCP. Uh, plus TLS, so it's small inside, I can say, uh, but I would, I can check, I do not uh, remember TLS version we've, uh, we've supported then. Any other questions? Maybe your thoughts, because I, I suppose that we are in community, so we can uh, exchange the information. Do you have some experience with Quick? I can say, I can ask for, because it is, for me, it is uh, something new. And, and, I did not meet an implementation, any uh, usage in Go, so I am curious if anyone has some. Yeah. 
looks like it's a new good topic for discussion on the next session. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a great topic. Okay. I think so. But yeah, guys, don't shy. If you have some experience or question, just ask them. Yeah.